Good morning, everyone, on this fifth Sunday of Easter. So we're still in the Easter season, so I guess you could still eat chocolates and, and uh, have bunnies around your house and all those little symbols. And all of those who are sitting in these pews and those who are watching online are part of this congregation and part of the body of Christ. And for those of you who may be tuning in for the first time, I'm Reverend Fraser Williamson, the minister here at St. Paul's United Church in Golden Valley, and I'm also the minister of St. Andrew's United Church in Port Loring. We also give thanks to Christopher Moore for the wonderful music and the wonderful voices that are on the tracks as well. Let us take a moment to acknowledge the territory we are on. For thousands of years, Indigenous peoples have lived in gratitude and reciprocity on this land and its waters. We are gathered on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe Nation, and we thankfully acknowledge their teachings and their ongoing protection of the land and water. And we are about to light the Christ candle. We light this Christ candle as a reminder that God is present to us in Jesus, who was sent to bring us new life. And I invite you to turn to the bulletins for our call to worship. As the sun rises in the morning, let all creation worship God. From the highest mountains to the deepest seas, let all creation proclaim the name of the Lord. For God alone is worthy to be praised. God alone makes all things new. All praise and glory and honor be yours forever. And in praise we will sing our first hymn, number 333, Love Divine. Jesus. 
Let us now pray together the opening prayer. Surprising God, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you made all things new. Long ago, you called your church to a love beyond all social and cultural differences and gave them the gift of your Holy Spirit to open their hearts to enact such love. Give us that same spirit of openness that we too might discern new directions in our day for your dream to reconcile and heal all creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Trusting in the love of God to make all things new, let us confess our sin to God and our neighbor. Let us pray together the prayer of confession. God of mercy, your command to love one another across all differences opens us to new horizons, yet we often respond with fear and judgment that hinders your goal for humanity. Forgive our sins, we pray, and give us a true repentance that leads to life for all creation. We pray in Jesus' name. God's promises are trustworthy and true. Your sins are forgiven. Be at peace to serve the Lord, and may you always be known by your love. So for Young at Heart time, you're just about to put the bulletins down, but I will hold them up because it's the picture on the front of it. And what do you see in the picture? Destruction on one side and looks pretty peaceful on the other side. Peaceful on the other, okay. Anything else that you know, notice? Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Springtime. Springtime, yeah. Looks clean. See someone standing there? It's hard to tell. Yeah, I think there's somebody standing on the top part beside the canvas. So that's <laughs> no, I'm talking about down the in their side. eyes. But no, that looks Yeah, it might be, but I think it's also a bird flying too, so oh, yeah. yeah. And I, for those that are online, I've got this picture up here. But what's interesting is um, you've got two things. So you've got destruction, but then you've got the new life. But the shape of the globe is a circle. And that's sort of the circle of recreation. So, um, and, uh, and that's, and part of our scripture has the Alpha and the Omega, so the beginning and the end, but the end is also a new beginning, so that's there. But I just thought it was a very neat picture to look at, and, and um, of all the pictures I could have chose for this, that one just stuck out to me the most. And it said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, the former heaven and the former earth had passed away and the sea is no more. And now our prayer for illumination. Let us pray together. O oh God of promise, your word made flesh in Jesus Christ is trustworthy and true. By the power of your Holy Spirit, may it rise up in us this day like a gift spring of the water of life to refresh our thirsty souls. Amen. And we have Bud coming up for the psalm and the scripture. Okay, the psalm is Psalm 148, Voices United, page 871. Please go. 
God from the heavens, with praise in all the heights, with praise, all you angels, praise God, all you hosts. Praise, praise God, God, Son and Moon, moon. give praise, praise, stars and lights. Praise God, fires, heavens, and all waters beyond heaven. Let the whole creation cry, glory be to God on high. Let all things praise the Holy One, at whose command they were created, to establish them for all time, setting bounds which cannot be passed. Praise God from the earth. Greatest sea creatures and ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and frost, gales that obey God's decree. All mountains and hills, all fruit trees and cedars, wild animals and cattle, creatures winged and earthbound. Sovereigns who rule earth and its people, all who govern and judge this world, young men and women alike. Old people and the children together. Let the whole creation cry, glory be to God on high. Let all things praise the name of God, the name above every other, whose splendor covers heaven and earth. You give us strength to your people, songs of praise to your people. To Israel, the people dear to your heart. Let the whole creation cry, Glory be to God on high. And the scripture this morning is from Revelations uh, chapter 21, verses 1 to 6, on page 1007 in the Red Bible. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Most of you may have heard this scripture selection from Revelation before. I, along with other ministers, use this scripture at funerals. The reason why it is used at funerals is that it gives the mourners hope. In the face of death, it gives the promise of a new beginning. The original hearers of this text from Revelation were looking for a source of hope. The book of Revelation was a prophecy told to John of Patmos. And at the end of this, you hear that John was instructed to tell this prophecy to the seven churches in Asia. The whole book of Revelation is known to many as the last days. But the book of Revelation begins with a blessing from God. When you look at the whole book, and I don't know if some of you have actually read the whole book, when you read through it and you look at these things, literally, it will seem scary. This verse which begins the second last chapter is a source of hope. There is hope in a new beginning. 
In the text of the book of Revelation, there is a reference made to Babylon. And reference is made to destructive things that the Babylonian Empire did. The use of Babylon is a metaphor for the Roman Empire. Using the metaphor of Babylon would have triggered memories of the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem. It would have brought memories of death and destruction when the city was destroyed and many of its people were forced into exile. The metaphor would also remind them of the Roman Empire which thrived on death and destruction. It was not just the hope of Judeo-Christians, but the hope of all those who were living in lands conquered by the Romans. The early Christian churches were not in buildings. They were small groups of people, 15 at the most, gathered in homes. In their smallness, they were called to share the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection. And in sharing this message, there is always a risk of persecution and death at the hands of the Romans. Death in the Roman style involved a lot of torture and violence. Some were sent into a stadium to fight with wild animals. And the messages in the book of Revelation listed that there would be times of trial, times of destruction, and times of death. There would be times that they would face evil. These images of evil were hard to avoid. But amongst these messages, was the hope of a new beginning. This new beginning comes after the fall of Babylon or, in the metaphor, Rome. The images used in this six lines of scripture are again metaphors. The beginning line, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more, is a metaphor for the original creation story. The absence of the sea is a reminder of the creation story where there is darkness and water, and that when God spoke, there is light, and then there is land. In the book of Revelation, the sea is the place where the battle between good and evil occurred. Declaring that the sea was no more is a new beginning. It indicates that the evil in the world had disappeared. This scripture is a new creation story. And when looking at the creation story, we have learned we all have learned in Sunday school about the Garden of Eden. But in this new creation of a new heaven and a new earth, it is not a garden, but a new city. This indicates that this new beginning is not exactly like the first creation story. It indicates in verse 4 that the first things have passed away. The metaphor used in describing this new city is a bride where it says in verse 2, And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. A wedding is a new beginning for a couple, and is it a new beginning for the families that are joined. Weddings back then and still now are a time of celebration. And the new union that is mentioned in this scripture passage is that God is coming down like a bride to be with the people. 
This is also a reminder that God did not come down to the that did come down to the people in Jesus Christ. God came down in Christ to initiate a new beginning. Like the death and destruction described in the book of Revelation, Jesus faced evil. Jesus faced violence. And Jesus faced his death on the cross. And the new beginning happened in his resurrection. The new beginning ushered in the hope of life after death. This hope this new beginning is recited at funerals as it gives hope to the mourners that, that are grieving, that the change in their life with the loss of a loved one. This scripture gives them a hope of a new beginning, a new life without their loved one. This scripture gives us hope of a new beginning today especially with the war in Ukraine. Each day we receive images of death and destruction. We see images of evil that have created death. We not only see the destruction in Ukraine, we also see bodies of Russian soldiers being carried away. There is death on both sides of this conflict. There are families that are mourning the loss of loved ones in the face of violence, in the face of this conflict. Both sides are looking with hope for a time when death and destruction will be no more. This conflict has changed the lives of the survivors. Now that this conflict is taking place, there is a hope for a new beginning. Here at St. Paul's and St. Andrew's, we're not immune to death and change. Over the last few years, members who have always been a part of these congregations either died or moved away. We also experienced a significant change when COVID-19 emerged. Many, because of safety, have not chosen to come back. Yes, COVID is still here, and some people are afraid to come because they do not want to catch it themselves, or they do not want to spread it to somebody else that they love. We are not alone in things passing away. Many churches have faced challenges. Many churches have faced death. Some have closed their doors. But in closing their doors, there is a new beginning. I've seen several posts of church buildings that have been closed, but in them there is new life. The church that I grew up in is now a mosque. But others have new beginnings. I learned of some churches that have converted into a hospice. Some have become homeless shelters and some have been changed into seniors' homes. It's not just COVID. Back in the year 2000, when I was touring Britain, I stayed two nights in an old church in Edinburgh that was converted into a hostel. Even though these churches closed, there was a new beginning that came out of the closure. As we emerge out of the COVID-19 pandemic, our lives have changed. Our lives will never be the same. Some of us are still mourning the change. We miss the way our lives used to be. We sometimes hope that it will return the way that it was. We wish that church would be full every Sunday. But there is hope. There is hope for a new beginning. There is hope for a new beginning in our mourning and our despair. As we face the world forever changed, 
we are assured in the scripture that we are not alone. We are assured of God's presence in Jesus. We are assured that God is present to us in others through the Holy Spirit. We are assured that like the coming of Jesus, God's presence will come down to us to usher in a new beginning. A new beginning without death and destruction without the evil battles that happened in the sea. Whatever we face in our lives, God will be there ushering in a new beginning. Thanks be to God. Amen. And speaking of God coming in to usher a new beginning, we will sing number 713, I See a New Heaven. so that they too can experience a new beginning. So for those who are watching online, the offerings can be made through PAR, which is pre-authorized remittance, or by checks mailed to the treasurer, and the address for the checks are at the end of the service. And now let us take a time now to dedicate our offerings.
us pray. Holy God, you have given us so much. Through your love and abundance, our cup overflows. From the bounty of your blessings, we offer these gifts back to you. Use these offerings for your glory as we work to bring your kingdom here on earth. Amen. And now for a minute for mission, who's saying, is it glory today? Okay. There's so many minute for mission people, I'm so blessed to that here at St. Paul's. So we've got three to choose from. <laughs> Where would you be if you had no education? Every child has the right to learn. Your generous support through mission and service means that children around the world can go to school thanks to partnerships with organizations like the Kenya Alliance for Advancement of Children. And the initials are K-A-A-R-C. School fees, violence, child labor, and discrimination mean that too many children can't go to or stay in school. CAARC brings together children's rights organizations to share information about child protection and safeguarding and to support children in schools. Thanks to your support, KAARC was established over 30, 300 child rights clubs in school. One of these clubs helped Misha through primary school. A bursary program helps him pay his high school fees and the children's right club at his school is teaching him how to be a positive role model. To start going to school was a problem. KAARC has helped me. They encouraged me a lot. They enabled me to start my primary school. Now I'm in high school, Meshach says. The club is helping us a lot too. They give us role models to teach us what is bad and help us to be confident in whatever we are doing. I'm now it's mission and work of the church and uh, every Monday here at St. Paul's we have uh, bid euchre and the cost is just $3. And we're jumping into a very busy week. Um, we have on Tuesday, May 17th at 11 a.m., that's following Ladies' Coffee Hour, we have St. Paul's Elders and Trustees at 11 o'clock. The following week, May 24th at 11 o'clock, is St. Paul's Stewards. And then, um, you better, I'd say, save some room in your stomachs because there's a lot of food coming up. Uh, we have on May 26th, St. Andrew's UCW Takeout Spaghetti Supper. It's $15 each and you can call Deb or Pete at 757-1862 to pre-order. And on May 28th, um, and I know I'm going to do some baking there, is our St. Paul's Bake Sale and it's from 9 a.m until 10 30 a.m and we will not be selling anything before nine but be here right at nine because the last time we had when everything disappeared within the first 10 minutes so that's why we're only doing it an hour and a half because it's everything will be gone by then and we do have coming up on june 1st at um, seven o'clock there will be a, a joint official board meeting here at St. Paul's. Is there any other announcements? There is a change in, in St. Paul's, I don't know if you call it executive position, but the, the person that sends out greeting cards and sympathy cards when you when you have them in the church is handing over her cards to a, another person. So Marlene, I think, deserves our appreciation thanks for all of her years yeah. of looking after this. And Connie is 
taking over the writing of cards. So the writing of cards has moved from Golden Valley to Bear Valley. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, I think people have always donated uh, cards that they have appropriate. He sent them out for sympathy, thinking of you, um, get well. Not so much birthday. Yeah. <laughs> and I get a pile of cards from those advertisements. Yes. Yes. So maybe now I know if I if the stack gets a little too high, then I can take them to Bear Valley. So that's because, <laughs> and I think Debbie's on the same mailing list as I am that we get all these things. That, yeah, I get them too. Yeah. <laughs> It's just you donate to one charity and then they all know about it. So that's. And they all want more. Okay. <laughs> Can I ask some yeah. information right here? Sure. We are dealing with that with a person in our lives, and the lady at the post office made a suggestion that if you do, you know, the return stamp envelope, mm -hmm. put right on the sheet in and put it in that envelope that you don't want to receive these anymore okay. because they pay for every return envelope that comes back and okay. they very quickly stop sending out the I mean if you put them in the garbage they just keep sending because they're not paying for the price of the return yeah so it, it, okay. it, it, that's, that's how you can solve that problem safe. I got four nickels in my pocket that came in some of them. Yeah. Well, you can always go on the collection plate, so that's it. You're supposed to send a nickel back for ten dollars. Yeah. Or ten dollars, that's right. And okay, nickel two. Well, I think this is a good time to pray now. So yeah. and when I say, O oh God of love, please respond by saying, raise us to new life in Christ. In the season of Easter rejoicing, let us offer our prayers and thanksgivings for the church and the world, saying, O oh God of love, raise us to new life in Christ. For the well-being of your creation, that we may promote its ability to offer praise to you through spacious skies bountiful seas and verdant lands, and precious creatures great and small, O God of love, raise us to new life in Christ. For the life of the church, that our generous witness may broaden your table, as all find a place to live and grow in love, O God of love, raise us to new life in Christ. For the welfare of your world, that all leaders and people, young and old, will strive to live together in harmony while serving the common good. O God of love, raise us to new life in Christ. For all who suffer any violence, pain, or grief, that they will know the comfort of your presence as you wipe every tear from their eyes. O God of love, raise us to new life in Christ. For the love made known to us in Jesus Christ through this community and for all other blessings, we give you thanks and praise. O oh God of love, raise us to new life in Christ. For all who have died, that you bring them to the fullness of your joy, where mourning and pain will be no more. O oh God of love, raise us to new life in Christ. And now let us pray silently those persons or concerns we would like to declare to you. For so many blessings and for answered prayers, 
We give you thanks through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we have our closing hymn, number 710, Shall We Gather at the River? <laughs> Thank you. 